Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about Arcanum's various combat modes, the real-time, turn-based, and fast turn-based. Kind of what the ideas were behind that, why it's even in the game, um, what I wish I had done differently. So, to go back to 1998, we had originally spec'd out Arcanum before we talked to Sierra. Um, we had a rough outline of what we wanted to do, and we were planning to make it turn-based. Uh, we wanted to do turn-based. We Coming off Fallout, we understood turn-based. Turn-based RPGs have something that I really like, which is, as I've said in another video, when I cast a spell, especially a spell that has an area of effect, and especially in an isometric game, when things are moving around while I'm casting it, that drives me insane. I mean, I liked Baldur's Gate, but that it drove me insane to try to cast like a fireball in that spell. Sometimes the people I was trying to hit would move out. Sometimes one of my companions would move in. By the time I clicked in the spell, I casted it and went off and blew up. Who knows what was being who was going to be hit? I didn't like that. However, when we got into deep talks with Sierra, they really insisted on multiplayer. And at the time, their argument was they didn't think that single-player RPGs without a multiplayer component would sell very well. And, you know, so that meant that we had to do real-time. And what they really wanted was just to make the whole game real-time. Now, if I had had my way, which I did not, I would have suggested dropping multiplayer and real time and just doing turn base and balancing for that. So because I didn't get my way, what should have happened and it didn't. And I point this out because uh, some people are, even though I talk about like watching my stories with nuance and understanding that I'm not always the good guy or I'm not always making the right decisions, even if I'm trying to be the good guy. Um, what I should have done here is dropped turn based and just made the whole game real time and balanced for that and made the spells for that, and just gone that way. I mean, there was an ample number of examples of games I could have used as a template for how to do real-time um, combat. In fact, when I really got into EverQuest, one of the things I loved about it was that concentration skill, because every time you got hit, you rolled against a concentration skill to see if you kept casting, which added a depth to... Uh, spellcasters because you not only had to be smart so you had all your, and have your spells and you know you wanted all these other skills and stats but you really wanted concentration too so you wouldn't get interrupted when you were cast in any case what happened was we decided to keep both and i thought i could do it and i was wrong uh, what ended up shipping was unbalanced for both real time and turn base we tried to balance them through your the same place we calculated action points for turn-based, we calculated how fast you should be um, doing your animations and attacks in real time. We thought that would balance. It did not. Um, we added the fast turn-based mode because I was trying to convince Sierra, hey, turn-based can be pretty popping. It can go pretty well because fast turn-based basically skipped the animations Um on someone's turn. So if you clicked somewhere, it didn't bother to show you walking or I don't even think it showed combat animations. It just boom, calculated your turn, a number would fly off and it would, it would continue. Um, now what's interesting is I had a lot more ideas on what to do with turn-based, but by the time we got the basic stuff implemented and real time and all the other features in the game, which I've said in other videos, I really should have edited some of them out. I know people like newspapers and they liked a lot of other features in the game. We just had too many features in that game. We couldn't get them all coded, debugged, and balanced in a reasonable amount of time with a dozen people working on the game. So some things should have been cut. However, saying that, there were a lot more ideas I had for turn-based that I wish I had explored. I already said in a previous video that one of the things I, I thought about for turn-based was just making, whenever enemies had consecutive turns, just collapsing them and they all go at once on that turn. And even more than that, just 
giving one initiative roll to all enemies. So if it was just you fighting, you'd go and then all the enemies would go. And then you'd go and all the enemies would go. If you had a party, you'd move someone in your party, maybe someone else in your party. Then all the monsters would go and then a couple more people in your party would go. What's cool about that is I talked about when I did some experience with that later, it, the pros and cons of letting enemies go in one turn seemed to balance out. Kind of wish I'd done that. Um, some other turn-based ideas I had was to separate movement and combat action points into se separate pools. Um, so the, the way that would work is you roll your initiative and then in the initiative order, everybody moves. So they do they decide where they want to be on the board. Then in initiative order again, everybody gets to do non-movement stuff. They can drink a potion, they can throw a spell, they can do an attack. That's interesting. Um some of the ideas I had to make alternatives for that, um, because I've played around with it in my little toys, is you move in your initiative order, and then the action is in reverse initiative order, meaning the first person to move is the last person to get his combat attack. And that had interesting things because basically, you know, the fast people would move quickly, but then the slow people would move and then immediately get to attack. So that led to some interesting things where if you had saw a melee guy come at you and you were a ranged guy, you could step away do your ranged attack, and then the melee guy wasn't next to you to attack. So it gave advantages to wanting to go first and disadvantages to wanting to go first. That was interesting. Um, another one was completely separate initiative roles for the move and action points. So what would happen is everybody would roll initiative and move. Then everybody would roll initiative again and do their action points. I really like this one because any bonuses you had to that initiative role worked in both of them, but weren't guaranteed. So maybe you'd move early in a in the during the move phase, but then the action phase you roll badly and you attack near the end. Now, if you have a really good bonus, chances are you're going to move early and attack early, but it's not guaranteed. And I like that that sense of um not gambling, but randomness that was thrown in there because it basically meant your bonuses were just that. They were good, but they didn't guarantee anything. The, the 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 lowest agility, slowest, you know, character in the entire uh, set of party members and enemies might roll really well and move first, and then might roll really well again and attack first. It was not common, but it might happen. It, it the same reason I like criticals. I like the fact that um, a battle can be going really badly and then you suddenly get a critical critical success and it turns it similarly occasionally a battle can go really well and you're getting a little arrogant about it and then you critically fail and your weapon explodes or something i love that so <laughs> it's funny i have a point on this i was i did this to answer someone's question about why we even had real time in arcanum and it was because of multiplayer and why we ended up with real time and turn based that was my bad decision but my point here at the end is I don't think turn-based RPGs have been completely mined, not even close to being completely mined, on fun, engaging mechanics that you could do for turn-based. I think there was just a quick rush into making RPGs real-time. And then when some people went like, whoa, you know, I don't necessarily want real-time, they introduced real-time with pause, which for me didn't address any of the problems I have with real-time, um, which isn't that people are moving around. It's that I can't do area of effect spells when people are moving around. Um, I think that there's a whole bunch of turn-based variations that could be explored. I, I kind of hope they are. I wouldn't be surprised if they are being explored in the indie space. The indie space is so huge. I can't even keep up anymore with what's going on. I mean, if you know of any um, RP turn-based RPGs that have some really unusual turn-based combat, uh, combat mechanics let me know in the comments i would like to check them out i just really like the the space of turn base and i'm always imagining what could be done there and i just feel like it's a it's just a part of rpgs that feel like especially as we went first person they're just being left behind and we're not going to see anymore and i think that's unfortunate
because I think there's a lot of cool stuff there. Anyway, hope that answered the Arcano question. Hope that gave you things to chew on for turn-based combat.